What's up, Poker Bees? Welcome back for part two of my Texas Card House experience. I have $300 in front of me, but I'm in for $800 total this session. We are going to get straight into the action. The first hand is 8-3 of diamonds. It's a bomb pot. I'm on the big blind. $40 in the pot. We go straight to the flop. It is a beauty. 975, all diamonds. I've hit my flush, and I have a hole in one to the straight flush. The middle position player decides to bet $10, and I'm going to raise this both for protection and for value. $50 is what I make it. The middle position player goes all in for his remaining $55. I make the call, of course, for $15. He's a fan of the vlog, says he wants to run it twice. Let's run it twice. <laughs> okay, we'll do it twice. Give me diamond, diamond. Don't give him a diamond. Okay, I got something. Give me a straight flush. Give me a diamond. I got a flush. He flips over king 10 with the 10 of diamonds in defeat. I'm scooping both boards, both pots. My stack's at 398. I'm really considering going to Las Vegas for the WSOP for like a month at least and playing in a lot of events. What do you guys think about that? The next hand I pick up is a six of diamonds. I'm on the button, 398 in my stack. There's a straddle on the pot. It's a $5 under the gun straddle. The under the gun player just rebought. He's the same player that I just scooped both boards on last hand. The cutoff goes to make a move, grabs four reds, throws 20 in the pot. I'm just going to call ace five of diamonds. I would have three bet. The small buy makes the call and the under the gun player completes. We're headed four ways to the flop, $82 in the pot. The dealer presents the flop seven, two, four, two diamonds. I have four to the nut flush. I also have the button last to act. I'm going to see what my opponents do. The small blind checks and the under the gun player rips his fresh stack all in $98. It's a cacophony of chips assorted in a non-traditional way. The cutoff tosses his hand away and I take no time, of course, pushing my chips into the middle of the pot. The small blind folds and the under the gun player wants to negotiate again, wants to run it more than once. We're having fun. He's a fan of the vlog. I just scooped both boards last time. I'm going to scoop both boards again. I say no problem. Let's run it twice. The top board is the Jack of Spades. No help to my straights. Looking for an ace or a 10 of diamonds. It does the job. The nut flush on the top board. The bottom is the Jack of Hearts. Looking for another diamond. No. The three of spades. My opponent flips over his hand. Nine, seven offsuit. Scooping the bottom board with a pair of sevens. This is why I hate running it twice. All this work for absolutely no payoff. But there's a silver lining. There can be a payoff. All you have to do is help me out by dropping a like on this video. It'll take less than a second, and it really helps promote my channel. Push it out to new viewers. Thank you so much for your support. Let's get back to the poker. The next hand I pick up is King Jack offsuit in the big blind 419 in my stack, trying to grind back to the $800 that I've invested into this game. The under the gun player has decided to limp. The middle position player limps as well, and then the low jack spices up the pot $11 to go. The small blind invests 10 more dollars. I invest nine. The under the gun player, middle position player all make the call. We're headed five ways to the flop, $55 in the pot. And the dealer puts out eight, ace, 10. Not the most promising board texture for me, but I do have gut shot and backdoor straight possibilities. I check when the option gets to me. The under the gun player bets $15. The middle position player calls. I'm closing the action, floating the flop, hoping to connect because if I do, I have the opportunity to really make some money. I make the call. We're headed to the turn. It's the four of diamonds. It doesn't help me at all, but it doesn't seem to help anyone because the turn checks through. We're headed to the river and the dealer burns and turns the five of spades onto the felt. I checked the under the gun player who bets 20. The middle position player gets out of the way and I sense weakness. I only see him value betting a weak holding. I'm going to put the pressure on hundred dollars, 80 to go. What are you going to do? After this hand, the player to my right told me that I obviously haven't played with this player that I'm in the hand with yet because you're never supposed to bluff this player. He folds though, and I get one through. 513 in my stack, and we are moving on up and moving to the next hand. These hands are coming quick. Pocket jacks, 492 in my stack. I am the small blind. The underground player has limped, and the middle position throws in four reds, 20 to go. It folds around to me, and I have the decision. Am I going to set mine, assume that if I call, the players behind are gonna call, or do I want to narrow this down to heads up action? Since I'm out of position, I decide I'm going to raise, make it 100. Three betting with jacks is dangerous. If I called, I can just see the flop, realize my equity. If I get re-raised here, then I'm going to be in a really tough spot. Hard for me to call, and he does go all in. 391 remaining in my stack. I This is not the table where people have been that wild, and I have no choice. I make an easy fold. I'm very confident he had me beat, but it still is sour losing $100. Maybe I would have hit my jack on the flop. You'll never know. 391 in my stack. I'm just kind of floundering around like a bobber on a fishing line, bouncing up and down, and I pick up ace-jack offsuit in the hijack. I'm not a huge fan of ace-jack offsuit. I much prefer for it to be suited, but I will definitely see a flop with ace-jack, especially in position. The low-jack is the first to introduce some chips into the pot. He makes it $10. I'm just going to make the call. 
Don't want to inflate this pot and make it too crazy. The big blind makes the call. We're headed three ways to the flop. Three, one dollars in the pot. And the dealer presents queen, queen, seven. Not a lot going on with this flop. Not a lot that anyone would have. My ace high could be good. The big blind checks. Action's on the low jack, and the low jack is going to make a move continuation bet into this pot. He makes it 20 to go. I don't believe him. I think my ace high might be good. I'm just going to call and see the turn. The big blind grabs his chips. He doesn't have any left, and he makes the call. We're headed three ways to the turn, and it's the queen of hearts. Three queens on the board. The question is, where is the fourth queen? The big blind checks. The low jack decides to check as well. Action is on to me. And if I want $91 in the center, I need to make a move. I bet 30 into the pot. The big blind takes another look at his cards, grabs some chips, just going with a call. The low jack has had enough. He's throwing up the white flag. He folds out of the way. We're headed heads up to the river, 151 in the pot, and the dealer drops a deuce on the table. The big blind checks to me. I have some showdown value with my ace jack. I don't want to invest any more money in this pot, so I check behind, and he flips up quickly. The fourth queen, the last queen in the deck, four of a kind, and he's taken this one straight from between my fingers. I didn't have a chance. The next hand is a hold'em double board bomb pot, 7-8 offsuit in the low jack, 331 in my stack. There's $35 in the middle of the pot. The first board, I have an open-ended straight draw. Make that two of them. I open for 15. The cutoff says he's priced in, makes the call. The big blind comes along as well. $80 in the pot, three-way action going to the turn. The top board is the ace and an eight on the bottom. I've picked up a pair on the bottom board. This time action checks to me and I bet 50 into the pot. Both the cutoff and the big blind are not phased. They both make the call. We're headed to the river, 230 in the pot. The pot is growing, and the top board is the queen, and the bottom is the three. I haven't improved on either boards. This time, when it checks around to me, I check behind. It checks all the way through. We're going to showdown. The big blind has nine deuce offsuit, taking the top board with two pair, and I'm scooping the bottom board with my single pair. We're splitting up the cutoff's money, and I make about 45 bucks. I'm up to 375. Yesterday was the Poker Beast meetup game. It was a ton of fun. A ton of vloggers showed up. It was a completely full house. The room was absolutely packed and someone bought us shots, which is something I absolutely never do while playing poker, but you know it's gonna make for a great episode. Can't wait to show you that episode. Let's get right back to the action. The next hand is a crazy pineapple hand and I get what I assume is a great hand. King, queen, jack. My king of spades has a partner to go along with it. Top board has one spade, but the bottom board has two spades. I'm drawing to my flush draws. And also, I have a queen on the bottom board. There's already 45 in the pot, and the middle position player rips it all in without any instigation. For $129, I, of course, am going to make the call, and then the under-the-gun player decides he wants to come along as well. What is happening? It's time to discard a card. Of course, I'm tossing away the jack of diamonds. I don't need it anymore. It's not doing me any good. We go to the turn, which is the queen of clubs and the jack of spades. I've improved on both boards, 432 in the pot. I rip it all in, $244. I'm not messing around. I want the opponent to make the call, of course. And I'm hoping that I'm gonna be scooping both boards. It's a real possibility, and this is not Omaha. This is Crazy Pineapple, and so everyone only has two cards to play with, although it is two boards, so this is a very strong hand. He folds out of the way, though, and we go to the river. Heads up, mono a mono. The top board is the two of spades. The bottom is the king of diamonds. I'm pretty sure I'm scooping both, but no, my opponent flips over ace five of spades. He's taking the bottom board with a better flush. He watches the vlog. He's a fan of the vlog. He wanted to make the vlog. Congratulations, Ethan. I'm pretty sure you're the first person I've shouted out in the vlog. Anyways, let's get back to the hand. 486 in my stack. To talk a little bit more about the WSOP, I've really gotten the itch. I've been watching on Poker Go all the old WSOPs, and I just want to play in it. I think this is a year. It's going to be absolutely massive. It's going to be a lot of fun. Of course, it will really be dictated by how much I can build my bankroll in the coming months. It's going to take a lot of work, but I'm down for it. The WSOP is a poker player's dream. Let's get back to the action. Ace, two of diamonds in the big blind, 486 in my stack. The cutoff has limped, and the button puts in a bet to 15. The small blind makes the call. And I'm going to go in ahead and three bet here. This is a $60 bet. It's a very playable hand, but it is a bluff compared to three betting with my premiums. I have to balance my range. And maybe not necessarily in this game, but it's a good habit to get into. The cutoff makes the call. The button makes the call as well. No problem for them. We're headed to the flop. $209 in the pot. And the dealer puts out queen, 10, deuce. All red, but not a single diamond. I'm stuck in the mud. I'm in a tough position. Action checks around to Ethan. Now he's just bullying us around, pushing us around. He bets $100 in the pot. I fold immediately. Taking a small hit to my stack. I'm sitting at 413 now. 
The next hand I get is ace five of diamonds. I'm in the big blind, 413 in my stack. The middle position player limps, and when it gets back to me, I'm gonna bump up the action to $30. The middle position player called. We're going heads up, $61 in the pot. King eight, 10 on the flop. I'm gonna continuation bet. I make it 40, and the middle position player folds right away. I'm scooping a pot, adding a little bit to my stack, up to 444. The next hand I get is jack nine offsuit in the low jack, 444 in my stack. It folds around to me, and I open the action for $15. The hijack calls, the cutoff calls, and so does the big blind. We're headed four ways to the flop, $61 in the pot. And the dealer puts out eight, queen, six. I've whiffed, except I have a hole in four if the 10 hits. It checks to me, and I can go ahead and check. We all check around to the turn, which is the jack of diamonds. I've now hit a pair, but if I hit my 10, my straight won't be as strong. It checks around to me. I'm bet out, $25. The cutoff makes the call. The big blind decides he's going to three bet to 100 and I have no other choice. I just toss away my hand, live to fight another day. Down to 404, my stack. I haven't had a good hand in a while, and I finally look down at ace-king offsuit in the small line. 404, my stack. I'm looking to do some damage, and get back to the $800 that I'm in for. The end of the gun player has opened the action to $10. The low jack makes the call. The hijack calls, the button calls, action's on me. I pump it up to 60. I probably should have gone larger with all of the calls. People are kind of priced in with this. People also are not scared to call three bets in Texas. The big blind makes the call and the button calls. We're headed three ways to the flop, $210 in the pot. The button is all in, so the only action will be between me and the big blind. And the flop comes out jack, queen, king. There are two diamonds. I've hit my top pair. I'm drawing to another hole in four to the 10. In an attempt to practice balancing my play and also the fact that there's already a player all in, I decide to check. The big blind checks as well. We're headed to the turn, which is the eight of clubs. I check and my opponent checks again the four of clubs on the river this time i'm going to take a small bet trying to get a little bit of value i bet 50 and the big blind folds right away my opponent who's all in shows king eight he hit two pair on the turn and he's scooping this pot i get the consolation prize of the 12 dollar side pot and i'm at the 344 in my stack i throw away a few junkers and then i get dealt a nice pocket pair pocket sevens on the button 344 in my stack the other, under the gun and cutoff players have limped I'm going to put some money in the pot, build it up in case I hit a set. I bet $15. The small blind calls the 14. The big blind calls the 13. And so do the under the gun and the cutoff players. We're headed to the flop. Five ways. $75 in the pot. And the dealer puts out four. Do seven. I've hit my top pair. It's absolutely beautiful. The small blind is going to start betting, which is even better. He makes it $10. And then the big blind three bets to $50. This could not be going much better now. I have the decision, am I going to put in another raise here or am I just gonna make the call and see if the players wanna continue instigating on the turn? I decide I'm just gonna make the call. If I had a set of fours or deuces, I probably would raise, but with my sevens, I'm pretty comfortable just making the call. We're going to the turn and it's the four of clubs. I've boated up, I have a full house. I'm getting the money in the pot. Finally, after just floating, floundering, not getting anywhere, I'm starting to see dollar signs. If I double up this hand, I'll be back to close to even. And the big blind bets $100. He's not making me do much work. I make the call. No reason to inflate the pot now. My opponent seems pretty committed. He only has $120 behind him. He's definitely going to bluff if he has hearts and misses on the river. The river comes out. It's the king of diamonds. He bets $100. And I mean, I go all in. And he calls off his remaining $20. $625 in the pot. And he flips up pocket tens. I'm scooping the pot. It's a big pot. It's getting me back to where I need to be. I have 665 in my stack. I lose about $20 in a hand. I decide I fought long and hard. I just need to get out of here. I have to catch a flight early tomorrow morning. If I leave now, I'll be in the green for the trip. So I rack up my chips and I head to the cage to turn them for one last time in Texas into cold, hard cash. In for $800, out for $637 for a loss of $163. My trip is finally wrapped up. My trip totals $885 in the green. I've survived Texas. Thank you so much for watching. See you in San Diego. Cato out.